Shalom and greetings from our Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Richmond here. I want to see this opportunity to thank each and everyone for joining me in this series. Today will be our last presentation. This is step 12. I will just do some recap or briefings. I will be talking about the headings from the intro to this session. Um, gracefully, we have all the videos on Facebook and YouTube. So you are watching me live on Facebook now. Thank you for joining me. Kindly share, like, and comment. The videos too are on YouTube. The name is Amka Richmond. You search for Amka Richmond on YouTube. You go to playlist, you will find dealing with addiction. I also have other playlists. Bible survey in G, how to find your purpose and calling, and the likes. Um, it is my vision to come out with sensitive topics or sensitive issues that pertains to life. So what I do is I do my research or I gather the materials and then I do it systematically from one up to the end. So this is a system that will help any person who is into any kind of addiction to leave that addiction in a biblical way. Today we are ending it. By God's grace, we will also look at another topic or another sensitive topic. We can decide to look at um, marriage. And for this matter with the marriage, we can look at husband part and then the wife part you are not going to treat it together you will treat it separately you have the system for husbands and then the system for wives you can look at them holistically and then when we are done we can also look at some key information or some key ingredients that the husband and the wife will need and then we can also treat that one too as a system so um, thank you once again let me seize this opportunity to greet my church st john's baptist church ghana Bremer was to be precise greetings and then um we will still call upon each and every one our loved ones those are far and near the ghana baptist convention that um our father in the lord reverend Jete is going on his retirement as you can see on my timeline we have all the details if you have any information that we, you need as to how you can get to the place you just go to my timeline the poster or the flyer is there you pick the number and call try as much as possible to grace this occasion go and be a blessing to our father in the lord he's been to the ministry for 30 years and over so we believe that as even he go on his retirement, his um, experience and then his work with God, he will use it to also continue to bless us. Let me seize this opportunity to also greet Resurrection Power Living Bread Ministries International. Greetings, Reverend Augustine. Greetings, Bra Brapa. Greetings to my daughters and sons. Greetings to my global audience and everyone on board. Greetings. So I will be doing some recap where we started from and then where we are ending. Greetings to Reverend Dr. Mrs. Cynthia Boons. Greetings. All right. So we started by looking at the introduction the difference between a scientific approach and then the biblical approach we got to realize that with the scientific approach they are able to manage but then they forget the fact that most addictions are spiritual so this system will go a long way to deal with the physical aspect and then the spiritual aspect giving you a holistic recovery all right so we started by looking at section one peace with god under the peace with god 
I started with step one, Lord, I am weak. Then we went to Lord, help me. And then the step three was Lord, take me. That was the first session. The second session was peace with yourself. Under that one, we shift or we move to step four, Lord, change me. And then we came to step five, Lord, lift me up. And then we came to section three, peace with other people. And the peace with other people, look at step six, Lord, teach me to love. And then we came to section four, section four, maintaining peace forever, which took us to step seven, Lord, save me. And then step eight, Lord, give me wisdom. Step nine was also under was also Lord refine me and then the last section was impact on the world Lord use me which was step 10 and then step 11 was Lord help me find my calling today we'll be looking at Lord lead me to the end now you are able to refine yourself you have all the necessary information you are practicing it how you can start well and then end well will all boil down to this step which is step 12 lord lead me to the end you need god to help you from this moment up to the end so we'll be looking at this one lord lead me to the end i will share my presentation and as usual you we'll go through it. You can just follow through the presentation with your phone or any device that you are using to watch me. Thank you for joining me with this important series as we bring it to an end today. So I'm sharing my screen. Okay. Now, the main thought of the step, the main thought of this step, we are looking at that one, and then we will bring it to an end today. By God's grace, this is how far we've come. At least we've used 12 weeks for this session. As I said earlier, we were looking at another system, another series, which is also key in life. Oh, important ingredients we need in this life we are going to treat it we look for the materials and then we will just discuss lord help me reach the end in dignity and keep my salvation i understand that without god's grace and help i will not make it therefore i turn to him and ask him to help me live my life with dignity and not bringing disgrace to his name on this earth i also ask him for eternity lord help me to keep my salvation whatever happens to me i will not let let go of my salvation i will labor i will make effort so i can get into the joy of my lord in the end Nothing early can steal eternity from me. So this should be your mind as we come to the end. The main scripture for this step, Matthew 24 verse 13. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Here is our real goal. To stand strong to the end and keep our salvation. There is nothing more important on this earth. Than our salvation. However, we can lose it if we don't work in this direction. Some believe that it is impossible to lose your salvation and that it is forever. But this is, it is not the case. Only he that endures to the end will be saved. It will not be easy and we will pay a serious price for our salvation. But it is worth it. We always remember that we always remember what Jesus endured for us so that everyone can be saved. 
and that will uphold us in the way of our lives and will give us the strength to go forward and come to the end. The goal of the step. This this step or this path is to help each person get to the end with dignity, keep his salvation, and to get to heaven, which is our ultimate goal. Lead me to the end. And it is not only in the context of our earthly life. In this step, we will look at eternity. Sooner or later, each one of us will die and stand before our Creator. And the goal of this program is not just to be free from addiction, but to get saved and have eternal life. In this step, we find out what we need to do to experience eternal life in heaven with our Creator after our, eterni- as after our earthly life. Chosen for salvation. The first thing we need to say as we speak on the topic of eternity is that each of us is chosen for salvation. There are no people whom God does not want to save and bring into eternity. And as a confirmation, he sent his son to this earth, allowed that he be crucified so each of us can have the chance to get saved. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. In the beginning, man was created for life in the Garden of Eden, and after the fall, he was driven away from there. We can read about that in the first chapter of the Bible. And for man to come back to his original state, God sent his son, on the earth and the price he paid was with his life giving it away to give us salvation now everything depends on us God has already done everything where we spend eternity is up to us so if we want to end up in heaven we have to be reconciled God in the first place and secondly to keep our salvation to the end of our lives on the on this earth. Persecution in the life of a believer. Throughout our lives we have pressure and hardship that will try to steal our salvation and to turn us aside from the right path. When you get saved, you cannot think that this is the end and relax and not strive anymore. In order to keep your salvation, you have to labor. Matthew 5, 11 to 12. Blessed are you when they rival and persecute you and see all kind of evil against you. Firstly, for my sake, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. By analyzing, you will understand that Christians will always be persecuted. Some have been burned on a stake or crucified. All the apostles have practically died as martyrs. And that is understandable. John 3 verse 20, For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. People are subject to the law of this world. They steal, they take revenge, rob the weak, and when they come across us, and with us on the background, they feel awkward. And And instead, of us becoming more pure, they try to make us filthy like themselves or annihilate us from their present. They try to drive us away from their present. If you look in the Bible, the same thing happened to Jesus. The Pharisees crucified him because he was saying the truth. And they did not want to 
confess that of what they were doing and change. It was easier for them to crucify Jesus. In the gospel, we see a lot of persecution and sorrow followed and will follow through Christians. And we also have to be ready for that. A slave is not greater than his master. It is possible that the one close to us will not understand that. Some will say that we have gone crazy or have joined a sect. We have to be ready for that. There is a far great reward in heaven for those who have been persecuted for the name of Jesus and have kept their salvation with dignity. Heaven and hell. If we actually compare our earthly life to eternity, there are no hardship that can hinder us to get to heaven. There is no reason whatsoever for us to miss heaven. Therefore, it is worth it to bear all things and then enjoy the presence of God in heaven. For the purpose of this study, it will be good to look at heaven and hell separately. Some people don't believe in hell or in the devil. And this is the great deception of the devil. People are still wondering if there is God. And don't even think about the devil. But where do all our problems in life come from? Where are our addictions and sickness from? All this comes from the devil because he hates people and is trying to harm them in every possible way and bring as many people as he can into hell. But the truth is that hell is not created for people but for the devil and his angels who have betrayed God and have become unclean spirits. Matthew 25 verse 41. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. And just because the devil managed to deceive people and compel them to live in sin, they will also end up in hell. And that is pitiful. We do not have to spend eternity in torment. We are to spend eternity in joy and diligence in the heavenly Jerusalem, which is a special creation for the righteous. Revelation 21 verse 2 to 4 confirms that. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, come down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eye. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Hallelujah. This should be our ultimate endeavor. And some people can be skeptical about that and may not believe it. But I will tell you, we better we not take that risk because our world is designed so and the proof for this is the changing, is the change that God does in our lives that has been wrapped by the devil. And another important point along this line is that our early life will determine where we will spend eternity. And I don't say that just to scare you. After death, we will not be able to change anything. We will not have the chance to repent and go from death to life. This has to happen here on the earth during our early lives. Therefore, I appeal to your common sense. Give this a serious thought. Where will you spend eternity? Let's look at Luke 16. 
verse 22 to 26. So, it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angel to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torment in Hades, he lift up his eye and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip a tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you receive your good things, and likewise Lazarus' evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot. Nor can those from there pass to us. Our early lives are given to us just to make our choice where we will spend eternity. God give us a chance and a choice. Who goes to heaven? This is the, these are some of the most important points I'm going to take us through. Who goes to heaven? Heaven is for real, per what I'm saying, and per what we've experienced, what the Bible says, what Jesus taught us. Now, who goes to heaven? This is very important, and then it, it should be elaborated on. If that is so important, that is heaven, let us find out who will end up in heaven and what is needed to get there. First of all, let us look at some specific points and we will see that no one will get there because he or she is a good man and because he or she does good and give charity. That is secondary. The main thing is our inner attitude to God, our motives and condition of our heart, which are revealed by our righteousness. There are specific conditions and you will end up in heaven if you now we are looking at some of the things these are important things we need to always remember you know god personally what will end you up in heaven you need to know god personally this is about your personal relationship with god no now for more details on this one you have to refer to step nine which was treated some weeks ago you are his friend the next step what will take you to heaven are you a friend of god your relationship with god cannot be based on consumerism i i fellowship with him not because i need it but because i like it and even if i make mistake or sin i cannot remain in that sin because god is holy the next step your walk in him and before his face that means that you live before God and with God. This is how Abraham and Enoch lived. They walked before God and with God. That doesn't mean that we will not make mistakes. But our work with God will always bring us back to the light, to the right path. Next step, live for him. All my actions are dedicated by God. Everything that I do is for him and because of him. I live with his values and for his purposes and desires. Therefore, my basic work are for the salvation of people and their peace with God. The next step, have made him my Lord and Master. Or have made him your Lord and Master of your life. Here we talk about willing, willingly submission to God. I submit my will, my desire, and endeavors to Him. And it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. I fully give myself to Him, my body, my feelings. Let Him do whatever He likes with them. 
The common thing in all this point is our relationship. Only on the basis of that relationship, we will end up in heaven. Nothing more, nothing less. Heaven, our main goal and our treasure. Let heaven become our greatest treasure and our main goal. Everything we do, let it be connected to heaven. All our actions will bring us closer to heaven. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 19 And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in this world. Now, life is not just about living here. Our hope and our faith, our actions, the reason why we follow all these steps is that there is a life after here. When we die, we have a hope. That is why Jesus promised us that he's going to prepare a place for us. And then when he's done, he will come for us. We may die and then go and meet him. Or he may come and meet us here. The most important thing is to reflect on the steps, have a personal relationship with God or Jesus, and then we will enjoy heaven, which is our main goal. Notwithstanding, we need to work with him in dignity. We need to bring the kingdom of God on this earth by looking at how heaven is and then prototyping it here there is peace in heaven we should try our possible best that we will also bring peace on this earth there is joy there is orderliness there is cleanliness there is love all these things we need to bring its prototype as sons and daughters of god on this earth these are some of the things Per the talents that we've been given, we need to multiply. We need to do more with our talents so that we will be rewarded. Hallelujah. Let us begin to prepare for heaven here. While we are still on the earth, let us begin to live as if heaven is already here. For example, if we are going to praise God in heaven, let us begin to praise him for everything in our lives. If we are going to fellowship in our thoughts, let us begin to control our thoughts here and stop thinking evil of our people. Even if our thoughts, we should not have evil against them. We should not have evil against other people, even our enemies, because our thoughts should be guided. We should be transformed by renewing of our mind. Our minds are going to reflect the kingdom. We cannot allow ourselves to miss heaven. It is forever. It will never end. Let us be wise here and not take our salvation and eternity lightly. To do every day prayerfully read the main ideas and the step out aloud. Every day pray in your own words for 10 minutes and then 10 minutes in tongues. Focusing on God helping you with your eternity or salvation, eternal life. Focus on getting strength from the Lord so that you can start well and then end well. Every day, read one chapter from Proverbs according to the date of the month and one from the New Testament. If you have drawn your system already, you can carry on. Read the Gospel of Matthew and make your conclusion using the following question. Why do some people end up in heaven and others in hell? Recommended movie. Left Behind 2014. Left Behind 2014. So, so far, so good. We are done with this system. How we can deal with addiction in a biblical way. How we can deal with addiction in a biblical way. So, as I said earlier... Um, we'll be looking at another topic or another system. We will start from introduction through to all the uh, the discussions. I want to seize this opportunity to thank you for joining me. I want to thank um, my mother, 
Madam Natalia Potopaiva, thank you for uh, making available this material. I want to also thank Dr. Sandy Andelaja for also um, making me aware of this material. Not only this one, the other important materials available. Um, there is a system for everything we want to do. Uh, I want to also thank Dr. Sandy again for coming out with um, a blueprint for creating system. Not only that, if you look at his books, most of them are systems which are very key in life. How you can teach core value to kids, how to find your purpose and calling. There's a system for that. How to be a good husband. There's a system. How to be a good wife. There's a system. Not only that, there are a lot of things that you can learn from. So uh, you can just go to uh, Kindle Unlimited or Amazon if you want to order some of his books. Um, notwithstanding, I will entreat you that you can also do other research, pray with your own heart or with your full mind and heart that God should direct you as to how you can find your purpose and calling. My name is Pastor Richmond Amankwa and I'm thanking you once again for being with me in, through this um, series. We bring it to an end today. We will be looking at another one which is also very key in life. So as we said earlier, most people are addicted to one thing or the other. Go through the system, put all the necessary information into practice and I'm hoping that you will all be delivered. We will be able to pursue what God wants us to pursue and at the end we will be rewarded. God bless you. God keep you. May God shine his face upon you and be gracious unto you. Till we start another series. I also want to thank uh, Frank Anaba for all the shares he's been doing with this series. I also want to thank Brapa and the likes. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank my brother Emmanuel Kroma Ebebio. We will also continue. Greetings to, let me mention some few names. Greetings, um, my daughter Rita. Greetings, my daughter Ivana. Greetings, Joel. Greetings. Most importantly, let me greet my wife, Mrs. Amankwa. Greetings. God bless you for your support. Greetings uh, to Mr. Obin. Greetings to Mrs. Alvin. Thank you for your support. Blessings. Blessings. And then hope that we will do another series. Till then, you have to uh, be stay on glue. You come to my timeline. When I'm going to start the next series will be shared on my timeline through a flyer. Madam Basua, greetings. Madam Felicia, greetings. Sofu Kajo, greetings. Reverend Pia, greetings. Henry, greetings. Martin, and then all the messages, greetings. Bye-bye. See you again.